If no, then yes. If yes, then no, and you run into problems with set theory. Yeah, so the way around that is, well, it's not a set. You have, you have very uh, careful ways to construct sets. And similarly here, it, you can't talk about the set of all ordinals. Uh, it turns out to lead to uh, a contradiction. So you could talk about the class of all ordinals, but not the set of all ordinals. OK, good. So um, we, we've uh, at least given you some sense of what an ordinal is and that there are lots of them. OK, so let's talk about induction. So um, let me just have you recall, when we talked about induction, um, well, we, how did we define it? Well, we used the principle of induction. And I'm just going to give you a version that's strong induction. It won't be the one that's most useful for us. So I'm going to let S sub n be what's called the section. So it's the set of all numbers in the natural numbers. Uh, this is just for regular induction, where i is less than n. It's called a section. So it's everything previous to n. And our definition was that a in n is inductive if we said it, we called a set inductive if for all n in the natural numbers, if the section is in the A, then what do we conclude about the set A? We call a set inductive if, if everything previous is in A, then N is also in A. That's what it means for a set to be inductive. Okay, so if you can, if the fact that everything less than N is in A, means that n is also in a. We say a is inductive. Okay. And the principle of uh, induction, or strong induction, basically says if you have an inductive set in the natural numbers, what can we conclude about a? It must be all the natural numbers. So just take the set, for instance, of all indices for which you're your family of statements, it holds. Really, induction ab amounts to showing uh, this, uh, that the set is inductive. And the principle of induction says if it's inductive, it must be the entire set of indices. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's recall the proof. This is also something we did earlier. Why is it that if a set's inductive, it must be all of n? Well, Remember, this is by contradiction. If A was not all of N, then there must be a smallest element that's not in A. Then N minus A has a smallest element. Oh, OK. Right, so that's our picture here, right? This is our set. And if I look at all the things that are not in the set, Let's say this is A. All the things, there's a smallest thing. What's the contradiction? And it, it might say has the smallest element. Let's call it, call it N. So what's the contradiction? Little n, yes, Emil? Oh, but everything before it is in A. Therefore, N is in A. Contradiction, right? But then Sn is an A, which implies that N is an A. Contradiction. OK, great. That's the principle of strong induction. Well, We're just going to do exactly the same thing now for sets that are well-ordered but not necessarily uh, finite or accountable, or not necessarily n, the order type of n. So 
here's uh, the theorem that we're going to rely on. It's the, the following theorem. Every set, I claim, can be well-ordered. And the proof, uh, I'm not going to do, but you can look up, basically depends on the axiom of choice or something called Zorn's lemma. If you take an algebra, you've probably seen Zorn's lemma. And uh, the axiom of choice is this, is this uh, interesting uh, axiom which says if you've got uh, an infinite, a possibly infinite collection of sets, you can form a new set by picking, by choosing, that's why it's called the axiom of choice, one element from each of the, uh, the sets in the collection to form a new set. Seems very harmless, but it leads to very interesting results. So, um, What's great about this? Well, what's great about this is you give me any set you like, I can place a well-ordering on it. If I can place a well-ordering on it, I can use induction, transfinite induction. So here's what we're going to do. Let's uh, well-order the set of uh, statements we're trying to prove. Okay. Or, or the well order the index set. Okay, let's call it J. Then everything I said above is going to hold, uh, except I'll just call S sub alpha the set of all indices gamma, where gamma is less than alpha, a section. And uh, we'll call a set inductive. What's that going to be? Well, it, inductive means for all alpha in the index set, if the section is in A, then alpha is in A, just like before. And now the principle of uh, transfinite induction What's the principle of transfinite induction going to say? Suppose J is well ordered. Then A and J inductive implies what? A is all the index set. So that basically all the statements are true. If you can show uh, that any section of indices, this for those statements, those statements are true, that the next that implies the next one in the well ordering is true, then all the statements are true. So it's basically allowing me to induct on this ordering. If I can show for any for any creature here, everything before it, those statements are all true, then this one is. Then, if I can show that, then the statement must hold for everything in the index set. Yes, Paul. It's not well ordered with the given order, but we can find an order that will turn the set of, uh, net of real numbers in the interval zero one into a well ordered set. Yeah. Now. Of course, the axiom of choice is, and this isn't a constructive argument, right? So, I mean, n nobody can give you an explicit well ordering of the real numbers, right? But there exists one. Okay. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> cool. So, um, let's see if I, let me see if I can, I'm going to end with a uh, application of transfinite induction. I'm going to sketch this. just to give you a sense of uh, how you might prove something by transfinite induction. So here's a question. Is there a set, uh, let's call it K, in R2, 